Hi everybody, we're live. <laughs> Welcome back to Recruitment Uncensored, the yeah, first one. one of 2024. I had to think then, what year are we in? It's 2024. And I was saying to Alan, I've made an extra special effort, not just for Alan, but for everybody today. I've washed my hair and I'm actually not in joggers, I'm in jeans. So I've gone all out for the first episode back. But yeah, I've got Alan on with me this morning, or not this morning, this afternoon. Um, and for the first session back, I wanted to cover off something that I know we all struggle with, um, not just um, you guys watching, probably myself and Alan still sometimes struggle with client objections. So I thought it'd be a great one to start with, BD focus, my favourite subject, and I thought, Alan, you'd be the perfect guest. So that's why I've got you on. So thank you so much for coming on with me this morning. That's I keep okay. saying this morning, it's the afternoon. Not a problem at all. Doesn't matter. There might be different time zones watching. You never know. Cover, cover all bases. And it shows live, doesn't it? Yeah. Not edited it. This is live and in full flow, completely uncensored. So let's get cracking because, yes. you know, there's lots of info we can give out to people. What I will say if you're watching, if you've got a question, chuck it in the comments. We'll cover it off. And if we can't cover it off live, we'll come back to it later. So anything you want to know, just put it in. And hopefully we can deal with it for you. So first yeah. one, which um, I wanted to start with, this question <clears throat> for you. Why, why do objections happen? I think we right. can get ahead a lot about this, can't we? Yeah, I, I think it, this is going to throw you out. This will throw the timing out. Um, before we actually <laughs> cover that question, and I think you know, Kate, and probably many of the, the, the viewers know this as well, but I think it's important to understand what objections are and what they're not, first of all, before we deal with that. Because, Definitely. you know, we, we all know, for example, that, that objections can be requests for more information. We know we've heard that before because an objection could be a question. It could be that they're giving you an indication that I'm not quite ready to buy just yet. So objection, not right now. They're, they're not always no's. Could they be stalling tactics? Yes, of course they could. Uh, could they be objecting because you're not talking to the right person? Absolutely, they could be. Um, they could be classed as buying signals, again, that request for more information. Yes, they could be trying to fob you off, or they could be absolutely genuine. And I think I think for me, there's, there's, there's four points to remember. We're in sales, okay? So please yeah. remember and accept that rejection is just part and parcel of the sales profession you know this you is part, you can't and this is part of people's natural uh buying decisions when you go out to the shop when you're shopping online when you go get a, a bloody coffee how many things do you say no to right you have to reject certain things to arrive at what it is that you want so point one is just welcome it it's, it's part of it's everyday part of what it is that you do the second part, and you're right, some people do find this difficult, and I still do to a certain extent, don't take them personally. It's highly unlikely that the person that is objecting to you is not objecting to you as a fellow human being, okay? It's just circumstance. Point three, I know I'm pretty old in the tooth. Kate, you're a lot younger than me, but we won't go into that. Um, and am I using the same techniques that I've been using for years and years and years? Yes. And do you know why? Because objections haven't changed. The no. same objections that there were 25, 30 years ago in recruitment, they're still the same ones. So actually, the stuff that we're going to talk about, it absolutely works. And the fourth point, and this is the final one, I do apologise, um, it might disappoint a few people, but there's no silver bullet. There is no one phrase or statement or comeback that will work with every single decision maker at every single time of day in every single market sector, in every single industry, in every single country across the globe. It just doesn't happen yeah. like that. So learn what Kate and I are dealing with people. You. Absolutely. Learn what we're going to give you and then adapt it to your particular marketplace and, of course, your own personal preferences. So I do apologise, but that was my preamble uh, for this question. <laughs> no, but I think it's important. It's needed. And I think it's a really good point to make. What, whatever level of experience you are watching, remembering that these, A, aren't personal, but B, you're not going to, you're never going to get to a point where, oh, I haven't had any rejection or objections. That's yeah. just not going to happen. So it's not taking it personally and, and seeing it as a reflection of, oh, I'm just not very good. Well, look, you could yeah. be the best recruiter in the world. You're still going to get objections. 
yeah. still going to happen. Yeah. So I think it's an important um, <clears throat> thing to point out, actually, so people yeah. can kind of not be so hard on themselves, I think, Absolutely. as well. And is, yeah. um, is, is Gwenlian, is Gwenlian, is that how you say it? Is Gwenlian Williams, um, is she in now? Gwenlian, I think, if, it, if I've pronounced that right, because it's Welsh. Um, the original link doesn't. I did see that. I can't see anything to say. What I'm going to do quickly, well, if you answer that question, Alan, yeah. I'm going to pop okay. the YouTube link in the chat just in case. No worries. Okay. Because you can stream it on YouTube. So we'll right. do that. I'll do that now on the side. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let me answer that question. Why do objections happen? <laughs> um, so, uh, so uh, let me answer that. I think sometimes clients are genuinely unhappy with the product that you suggested or the price that maybe you've quoted. So that could be a reason why they've happened. Maybe they're just thinking out loud. They're just venting. And it just so happens that you're going to be the person on the receiving end of it. Um, what else they happen? They could be heavily influenced um, from past experiences of working with recruiters. They might have certain prejudices or misconceptions about you as a recruiter or recruiters in general. Uh, maybe they're just trying to fob you off and get you off the phone because it's, you know, it's a hump day that some people call it. Um, or this is an important one. Why do objections happen? Because you asked for it. And I'm not talking about you ask for it directly. Oh, please, can you talk to me about how expensive we are? It's not It's not about that. It, it might be that you've come across as too pushy. You've come across as too salesy. You sold the wrong thing. You, or you demonstrated. Absolutely. No one likes premature selling. I say that right. Um, but you may have demonstrated in some way, shape or form that you haven't done your research on them or the marketplace or you don't know your own products and your own services well enough or you've demonstrated in some way that you just didn't listen and remember again it could be the wider objection happened because you're not talking to the right person so you need to have it might just be a question of poor timing kate said earlier on but when we were talking that you don't know what's happened in the preceding minutes to them answering that phone call from you did they stub their toe have they run over next door's cat and something catastrophic happened in the family and they've now got to go and or, you know and you're on the phone it could be genuine if someone's not hiring they might genuinely not be hiring if somebody doesn't have yeah. the budget guess what they genuinely might not have the budget so just understand that the reasons are multiple. Your job, and this is the next question, hopefully, is, is to understand what the hidden or real objection is. Usually the first thing that comes out of their face is not the real one. You need to dig just no. that little bit deeper. I think object. I always look at objections as sometimes they're or quite often they're doing us a favor. Because as you said, something's missing. And now I can find out the real reason or I can really find it out. And these can obviously come up at different parts of the process. But for me, it actually can uncover a real need, a yes. real reason. And it, and it in itself, I think people hear an objection. They think, oh, that's it. Phone down or meeting's done. But actually, it can open up a whole nother level. Yes. With, with, and we'll come to it next mm -hmm. with how to deal with it. But it actually can open up a whole nother conversation. You, you've just got to see it that way yeah. and perceive yeah. it that way instead of as you mentioned and we talked about earlier not taking it personally yeah and it's viewing it differently so sure. totally with you on that one well that leads us nicely into the next question which is what's the best structure to use to overcome them which i think is going to be really helpful for anyone watching because i love a structure and a process i think i think okay. it always works and again as i just mentioned just to caveat that Whatever structures you've been given previously, you know, between Kate and I, we've got decades worth of, of training under our belt. And we've probably seen lots of different structures for how to deal with objections. Now, the chances are they all work. So it will come down to personal preference. What works for you? What is, what is your preference? So the one that I've been training for many years and still do right now, it has four parts to it. So it's listen and acknowledge the objection, first of all. Then you question the hell out of the objection to fully understand it. Then you sell back to overcome that objection. And then you close it off to make sure that that objection has been dealt with. So that's the four parts. Now, each one of those sections, it, it, it sounds quite easy, doesn't it? You listen to it. You question the hell out of it. You sell back against it. 
uh, and then you make sure it's been dealt with. So that's the structure, but each one of those has many techniques within it. So if I take the first part, which is listen, listen and acknowledge or reassure. So for me, it's about listen to the words they're saying, but also listen to how they are saying those words. The I think the real meaning of somebody, you know, there might be venom, there might be disappointment, there might be anger, it could be that they're pushed for time. The paralinguistics that they give you when they say their objection is a big clue as to how you can then meet that. For example, uh, I know you're going to look at my body language here, and that's probably going to give it away. But if the client said, oh, look, we just don't have the budget for this. Right. I'd like to think that that will convey a different meaning to this one, which has the same words. Look, we just don't have the budget for this. So the second one hopefully comes across as a little bit more dismissive, whereas the first one, oh, I just don't have the budget for this, might sound as if they're a little bit disappointed. They'd love to have the budget. So therefore, yeah. we might, might need to be a little bit more creative with that. Also, listen for whereabouts. Whereabouts in the conversation did that objection happen? For example, if I pick up the phone and say, oh, hi, it's Alan Clark, recruiter here. I'm a specialist recruitment trainer. And they interrupt me and they go, really? Another bloody one? I've just had Kate O'Neill on from some coaching. So I'm, not have. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Well, the chances are, <laughs> the chances are they're not objecting to you personally. They're just objecting to the fact that you might have been the 10th recruiter that's called them up and it's only bloody 10 past nine. I'll give you a real life example. I called this woman up years and years and years ago. She worked for a bank of Tokyo, I think it was. I called her up and it was about half past nine. And I said, oh, morning, it's Alan Clark from Blue Arrow Personnel Services. She, and she just launched down the phone. What? Is there bloody something in the air? It's 9.30 and this is about the 30th call I've taken from recruiters. And I'm like, <laughs> no, this, okay, don't do this. I said, oh, well, that's lucky for me. Do I get a prize? And she said, I beg your pardon. I said, do I get a prize for being your 30th caller? And she said, no, no, you don't. I said, look, I'll call you back at three o'clock and put the phone down. I thought, well, there's no way she's going to want to carry on this conversation. So at three o'clock that afternoon, I called her up. So I called her up and said, hi, whatever her name is. Hi, is that Bridget? Yes. I said, it's Alan Clark. I said, we spoke very briefly this morning and I'm just calling up to claim my prize. And she said, prize? I said, yes, yeah, so this morning when I rang at eight, uh, 9.30, you said that I was a third uh. caller. And she said, oh, Alan, she said, I'm so sorry about that. I got in early to deliberately clear my inbox. She says, and I just had recruiters calling me. I'm so sorry about my outburst this morning. How can I help you? Right. And it was that that floored me. And I went to my training notes going, oh, my God, objection handling. Where's it got? How can I help you? <laughs> So where has it got someone's being nice to you? It just, was, it just wasn't there. So, um, so listen for whereabouts in the conversation these objections happen. It might be something you said that invited the objection. So whereabouts in the conversation did it happen? Was it when you started to talk about fee, your terms? Was it when you started to talk about your, your services? Was it that you'd made some assumptions? But also listen for what's not being said. When somebody says to you, we don't use agencies, what are they not telling you? They're not telling you why they don't use agencies, what their experience has been. Have they used them before? Yeah. What was the and experience? Not, There's, that's a great one yeah. to come back to because there's so and, much to go with. Yeah, and they don't tell you what they're doing instead. So actually, by challenging that, if they say, oh, we don't have the budget, okay, that's very interesting. What would you need to do to get hold of the budget? Oh, we've got a PSR. Oh, so you just acknowledge it and they carry on with the questioning. I do suggest, however, that you listen, give them the time and don't interrupt. Don't yeah, interrupt because really it comes important. across as rude. It comes across as you've already got a pre-prepared response and say things like, I hear what you're saying. I appreciate. I understand. And sometimes just using that sort of softening of the tone can sometimes take the sting out of the towel. I know that some of your yeah. viewers will have heard of the feel felt found. Um, if you said, look, I understand how you feel demonstrates a bit of empathy other people have felt the same way so in other words you're not alone but this is what they found in other words they came out the other side and they were happy so if i if i try and give you a real life example of how that might happen if somebody said for example yeah hey, you're too expensive you can say look i completely understand how you feel that agencies might come across as expensive in fact many of my existing retained clients felt the same way initially until they realized the value that we added 
to their recruitment campaigns and their ability to deliver on their projects within yeah. the right time frame. So you can almost start to do a little bit of a sell there. So that's all under listen. That's listen and understand. That's the first point. Second yeah. one is question it. Question the hell out of the objection. Remember, they're not telling you everything at the first at the first sign of asking. So whatever your questioning techniques are that you've been trained on, if you've been trained on open, closed, probing, hypothetical, spin, use them all. Absolutely use everything within your armory. This is the most important part of a Investigate. Home. Yeah, dig deep, investigate, and find out what the real and or hidden objection is. Because it's only once you've done that in-depth investigation and questioning that's the only way that you can get onto part three, and that is selling. Selling to overcome the actual objection. Present yeah. back an appropriate solution. Now, whether you're going to use the FAB approach, features, advantages, and benefits, whether you're going to pitch them an absolute superstar candidate, either way, you need to make sure that whatever you are suggesting here matches what their problems were. Tailor so whatever it. That, take take it away. Don't come up with some sort of standard patter, but make sure that what their objections are has been met by your presentation or your sales pitch just here. It shows them you're still listening, that you've listened does. again. But yeah. going back to what you said about listening, it's Pardon? not waiting for your turn to talk. It's at, like you mentioned, it's actually listening and effectively. And I really like what you said about like even the tone of their yes. voice, because that in itself... <clears throat> You know, you know, OK, I need to be a little bit more empathetic here. This person sounds disappointed or this person sounds dismissive. I need to be really um, aware that maybe they're short on time. You know, it, it it's listening out for the things, the little things that can make such a big, big sure. difference. Not, sure. oh, I know what I'm going to say next. I'm just waiting for my turn to talk. Absolutely. And, and I also think that for me, and I, I do play sort of word games, but the best anagram of all that's out there is what is an anagram? of listen kate you're absolutely right silent <laughs> i knew Sil that that's why i did that <laughs> <laughs> there you go you see not rehearsed at all and um, uh, we are and uh andre uh we'll we'll come back to your question about how to acquire a uk client from outside of the uk that's more about acquisition on the BD side of things, uh, unless, of course, you're saying that one of the objections was um, we don't use recruiters uh, outside of our country or we don't use UK. Recruiters. I would say for that one, we will come back to you on the comments after because we might okay. Let's see what we do for time. But Let's that's a whole okay. subject in itself, isn't it? That one. Yeah. So one, we said we were going to listen. Number two, you question the hell out of it. Then you sell back an appropriate solution. Number four, close it off. Close it off to make sure that the objection has been dealt with. You get some form of agreement. You agree some sort of action. And there's lots of different ways you can do it. Some people say things like, how does that sound? Um, are you now happy uh, to proceed with us on that basis? Would you be happy to work with us next time you recruit? Is that something that you would now consider? You need to make sure that you've covered off the objection. So that can now be dealt with. Now we can move on to a different topic of conversation. And of course, if you get a no, it might well be that you try to close it off too soon. So go straight back to step to two. Start. Yeah, go back to step two. Now, here's the thing. This is all well and good, Kate and Alan. This is all the theory. And in a moment, we'll discuss some of the specifics. But for me, Kate goes down the gym. I go down the gym. I have to because of my branding. For example, um, if I didn't do what I said I'd do, I'd have to change my branding to recruit a fat. Now, I know it's only one letter. <laughs> That's got a ring to it. <laughs> and a little bit more stitching around the tummy, which I don't need. <laughs> but it's a, it's a bit like going to a personal trainer in the gym. You don't just go to a personal trainer once and then expect to have the body beautiful or the fitness physique. That's the start of it. So whatever we give you on these sessions here, that's the start. You've now got to go and do the reps. How do you become really good at objection handling? You've got to do the reps. What will that give you? Give you muscle memory. It will also give you the confidence and the competence to go out there and handle pretty much any objection. And I want to tell you about my first boss in recruitment called Gerard. I don't mind telling you. Don't name. spoil our top tip, though. Oh, no, no, I won't. I won't. He, right used to, he used to do. <laughs> he used to role play with me. So I might be in the coffee, uh, in the kitchen. I might be sat on the toilet at a bus stop. 
and he'd be there. He tapped me on the shoulder. I go, oh, hi, Gerard. I didn't realise you got this bus. He said, we've got a PSL. I think, seriously, I'm at a bloody bus stop and he wants me to roll. I'm on the toilet. a knock on the door. Oh, someone's in here. Now we don't use agencies. They're too expensive. So whenever I heard an objection on the phone, I'd already dealt with it. I dealt with it standing up, sitting down with a copy of the sun in the raining, in, you know, in, in the raining wet outside at a bus stop. So practice with these things. Role play, however much you might hate role plays. And one other thing. Have you heard of predictive objection handling, Kate? No, I might right. know what it is, but I've not heard of it called that. Okay, Thanks. if you know your clients, if you know your marketplace, I've, give, I've been given the sign by Kate, I know I've got to hurry up. Um, predictive objection handling is, if if you know, the, for example, that your client is likely to have a, a TA team, or they recruit internally, or they've got a PSL, or they might be working with other recruiters, use that as part of your opening gambit. So when you open up the course, hey, look, I appreciate that a company of your size is probably working with a number of recruiters. In fact, you may well have a, a PSL. Uh, the purpose of my call today is not to disrupt that process, but rather find out a little bit more about how that's working for you. So they can't now say, oh, hello, we've got a PSL because <laughs> you've already told yeah, them. Yeah, you've already dealt with that. Yeah, you know that. So for me, it was a bit like putting your hand down the wire and locking their objection handling drawer and coming back. So top tip that wasn't the top tip but it is a tip no we've got we've got a, a top tip for you at the end don't worry guys don't worry sure. um well let's go to question three which we kind of drew on a little bit earlier but how do it, how do you get around specific objections right. i know you're good you've got something to share haven't you <coughs> i have let me um uh, let me just see if i can uh, remember the lessons that kate gave me uh earlier on <laughs> right so we've got about five minutes for okay this. no that's fine it won't well, take that long. Add... um hopefully you can see what's on, we, we on did my it. screen right now um this is on on my website and there are there's uh something called response handling tools now these response handling tools um written by me just, you know based upon my experience but there's a section on gatekeepers a section on dealing with client objections retainers if, it, if you're doing retainers there's some specific ones for you there and there's one around handling candidate calls and getting more from them if i just give i'm only going to give you an example handling client objections you can actually use this whilst you're on the phone so if you click on use tools for example it might say you're too expensive and if you click on that, it will give you a number of options that you can respond with. I appreciate that you may find this expensive. Uh, what exactly are you comparing that to? What would you expect from a supplier who charged X amount? We don't have the budget. We're not hiring. So you click on that. No problem. I would have been lucky if you were hiring. You've got happy with current agencies. Speak to HR. We have a TA team. We've got a PSL. Actually, my intention and, and purpose of the call today is not to do away with your PSL. So send me a cv we don't use agencies we don't use contractors you've got so many different options on there and comebacks that you can use um for me i'm going to stop sharing that because you've seen it now and let's let's come back to uh my face are we there are we there now so We're back that's a tool that that you can use and, and i designed this last year because i haven't seen anything online that you can use interactively whilst you're on the phone and you can use it to practice with. Because I used to give up photo albums, people have their training manuals, and when you're on the phone, it's very difficult to flick through to that page. But having something in front of you, you can use it on your phone, on your tablet, on your PC, but it's a great way to just remember those initial one-liners just to help you. For example, yeah. um, you know, things like too expensive, I know how to deal with that. The first thing we put it this way, Kate, have you ever been out shopping and you picked up an item, looked at the, the price tag and you've gone, oh, that's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know why we do that sharp intake of breath thing as well. That's expensive. Who taught us how to do that? Um, <laughs> so, but the thing is, you have three reasons as to why you're saying that's expensive. First reason is it's not within your budget. I wanted to spend 120 pounds on a pair of shoes, but these shoes are 200 quid. So I'm going to say in my head, they're too expensive. Or I've seen the same pair of shoes down the road cheaper. Or I've seen something of the same price, but better quality. So yeah, those are the three that? reasons. Whenever anyone says to you too expensive, never allow that. 
just ask them what exactly are you comparing that to and mm -hmm. and even with the psl objection this is brilliant we don't need to do When's as after much review? well okay so here's the thing there are lots of standard questions the first thing i want to do is acknowledge that i want to say kate i'm so glad that you have a psl why the hell am i glad that you've got a psl well, it shows you work with agencies. There you go. So what don't I need to sell? I don't need to sell the benefits of working no. with recruiters. They're already bought into that. What I now need to do is get them to see the benefits of working with me, either alongside or as opposed to those on the PSL. And I would be asking as well, in so many words, how what do I have to do to get yep. on that PSL? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Again, there's lots of standard questions and Kate and I will have our own, you know, our own preferences and differences. The truth is they all work. For me, when it comes to PSL, I'm not going to make any assumptions. When they say, oh, we've got a PSL, I'm going to say things like, okay, well, that's good to know. Uh, tell me, what roles do you recruit for? What roles do they recruit for? The same as the internal talent acquisition team. Let's not assume that they actually recruit for the same roles that you recruit. No, because they don't sometimes, yeah. do they? So, okay, I appreciate you've got a PSL. Tell me what roles do they recruit for? For example, do they do the top end executive search? Do they do the specialist roles? Or are they sort of... Temp, uh, sort some of, are only really temp, some yes, are exactly firm. Or... Ask them that question. I would say, how happy are you with the PSL? What recruitment methods do they use for you? And you ask them questions that are about the PSL as opposed to being a bit too salesy and saying things like, what do I need to do to get onto it? Let's find out about how it's performing. How do they use it? What roles? Uh, how long does it take this PSL to deliver high quality profiles to you? You know, what do they do to ensure that the candidates can actually do what they say they can do? And think, really, what, what are they talking about here? Yeah, so, and I think as well, it's important to ask them things like, what do you like about working with the agencies? Because yes. the go-to yes. always is pick the negatives, pick the negatives. But actually, we want to replicate what those PSL agencies are doing well, if if they're doing anything well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to come back to you for the top tip. Yes. Uh, before we do, I'm going to just tell everybody what the next episode is going to be all focused on. So it's going to be on the 24th of Jan exactly the same time 12 30. now my guest is gabby preston Fipers, who's co-founder of tools at Recru raccoons gabby, so i'm gabby, really gabby. excited to get her on the truth of the matter is i can't really tell you what we're going to talk about yet because um i haven't heard back it's my fault because i've been on christmas holidays and not got um the <clears throat> theme nailed down with her but it will be sourcing related boolean related because that's gabby's bag so um don't do not worry i will advertise it in the next um it'll go live next wednesday but it's going to be source in focus but yeah really excited to get her on so that'll be the second one of 2024 so and good come luck back good luck with keeping your... abby to 30 minutes huh good luck <laughs> with keeping abby to 30 minutes <laughs> Uh, I, I've just got my uh, my techniques. I've just got my ways of doing it. She's brilliant. But let's come back to you for this top tip because I think it's right. a pretty good one, actually. Okay, uh, top right. tip is what's, our, what's your top tip? <laughs> Do what we've said. Do what we've said. Uh, I've Please. been in recruitment since 1995 um I know this stuff works because I, I'm, a lot of my clients, the clients that I've picked up from people that I've trained as rookie recruiters that now have their own business. And they say, you know, can you come in and train our guys on this? It's it's not the training that we give you. It's the application of the training that makes the difference. You yes. can watch this podcast, you can listen to it, say, that was nice, that was a nice half an hour, or you can do something with it. You can go out there, you can predict the objections, you can listen to what they have to say, you can question the hell out of it, you sell back to overcome the objection, and then you close it off to get commitment. Enjoy it. Yeah, that ultimately, if you do not put the knowledge into practice, yeah. it's not it's not going to happen. You've got to build up these habits. <clears throat> and the more you do it, it's like the role play thing you said earlier, the more you do it, the more you practice it, the, the more of a habit it will become, a second nature. Yeah. You know, you won't need maybe notes in front of you, for example. But yeah, that is hitting the nail on the head. There's no no point listening to that and enjoying the info if you're not going to actually put it into practice. So 
Absolutely. Totally with you on that one. Yeah. Totally so with you. Apply the technique. Don't apply the technique. <laughs> apply the technique. Don't apply the technique. <laughs> Love that. Well, look, thank you so much for coming on. I got Anyone this out watching? as well because I know that you're a potty mouth. Oh, we should have done. Do you know what? I don't think I've actually used a swear word in the last half an hour, so we've not needed it. Um, but and anyone watching, Alan's on the event as a speaker, so I would really encourage you to connect with him if you haven't already. Any questions after? If you're not watching this live, you can still chuck us questions in the event or on YouTube, and we'll get them answered for you. But connect with Alan. You know, he puts great content out, not just BD focused, um, but, you know, it's going to be useful tips for you to pick up on. Get on his website. Just, you know, use all this information we're giving you guys. It's free intel to help you become better recruiters. We're not just saying it for fun. Um, but, yeah, thank you very much for joining me, Alan. That's I okay. Really Thanks for inviting me, Kate. Back on at some point. Yep. Um, so expect an invitation. But um, thank you, everybody that's watched live or streaming after. I will see you on the 24th. Okay. See you soon. Take care. Bye.